Hi guys, how's it going? Dave here from DaveMarrPhotography.com. Today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use three images that are only partially focused and combine them together to create one fully focused image. First, we're going to have an image that's focused only in the background. Then we're going to have one that's only focused in the middle ground and one focused on the immediate foreground. Using focus stacking, we can blend them together and post-process them to get one overall sharp image. First, let me explain what focus stacking is. I use focus stacking when I have a picture that has a very long depth of field, such as this one, meaning you have an immediate foreground focus, such as this rock, and then you have something you need to focus on in the far distant background, such as this mountain peak, and you need sharp, sharp focus all throughout the photo, such as the mid-ground right here. Now, to do so, you can take a single photo and just focus very far back in the distance, such as this mountain peak. And that's what I did for my first photo. But, as you can see, everything's focused here. But as we drag down the photo, closer to the foreground, it starts to get a little blurry right in here. Now as I get even closer, it starts to get more and more blurry as I go down towards the very bottom of the photo. And let's take a look at this rock, for example. In this photo, it's blurry. Now keep that in mind, and we're going to come back and reference that later. The next photo I'm going to take here covers me for my center ground. So if you're out in the field shooting, first thing you're going to want to do is take a photo to focus on your background. So just focus somewhere back on the far distant horizon. Take a photo. Now with the exact same settings, come in and take another photo of the midground, except rearrange your focus so it's focused in the midground. The last photo you're going to want to take is for your foreground, such as right in here. And I focused right in this rock area for this one. So let's take a look at this rock again. This is focused on the immediate foreground and this is focused for the immediate background. And as you can see, <clears throat> this rock isn't very focused for the shot that I took focusing on the very far background of this photo. So using all these photos, I can blend them together and get nice focus for the entire photo. I want to emphasize that you don't really need to use this technique on every photo. For a lot of horizontal photos, you won't need it at all because the depth of field isn't that much. Now if you have something that's right in front of your lens, say a few inches to a few feet away, you should probably use this. The best way to check for it is go ahead and take a photo focused at infinity or somewhere near your background and then just zoom in on your photo on your camera and see if it's focused in the foreground. If it's not, you'll probably need to take another exposure for the foreground. So let's go ahead and get started with processing these focus stack photos. First thing I'm going to do is process my photo for the background and then I'm just going to sync the rest of the photos to match it. So for this photo I'm going to make it a little bit cooler. I took this in northern Norway so I wanted to give off a little bit of a cool feel that was uh, there that morning when we were taking photos. Uh, this was actually a really nice bright orange sky for the sunrise, but you can't really see it in the raw file, but I'll bring that out later in post-processing. And bring this magenta right in there. I don't want it to be too magenta in the foreground, but that looks like it should work. Next thing I'll do is bring down the exposure just a little bit bring down the highlights a little bit and then I'll bring out the shadows and the blacks and that looks like it should do it uh, we'll bring up the vibrance the saturation a little bit and turn on profile corrections and this isn't the steps that I do for every single photo in RAW this is just a quick and easy edit of this photo so I can show you guys the focus stacking techniques and we'll leave that right in there and that'll work. So now that I have processed this single raw file I can go ahead and hold down shift and click on my last photo and as you can see these are all highlighted now. Now you can just go over here to the sync button and select sync, select check all and synchronize. So this will sync all the photos so now they look exactly the same and you want to go through and scroll through and check and make sure they are and you can see that all the white balance and the color and everything is pretty much exactly the same so now that all of our photos are synced up and look the same, the next step is to export them. So this is how I export my photos. Select your first photo, hold down shift, and select your last photo. Now you can go to export, and I'm going to show you how I export mine. Mine is export as TIFF, I have that as a preset, I just send it to a folder called Photos Processing. My file settings are TIFF, Adobe 1998, and 16-bit component. Everything else is just standard. I haven't touched it, so you can close down all those if you want. And then you can just save it as a preset. And I'm going to have export as TIFF, and I'm going to export it. So now what it's going to do is it's going to send these three files to, as TIFF format 
to my folder that I specified. So while we're waiting for it to do that, we can go in here and open up Adobe Bridge, and I already have it set to this folder, Photos Processing, and we can watch these go into this folder. Once these are all in the folder, we can select them and load them into Photoshop. And let's make sure this is all done, and you can always see down here on Lightroom when it's done or not. And it should be done by now. So I'm just going to select all three of these. You can just drag and click. And I'm going to go to Tools, Photoshop, Load Files into Photoshop Layers. Now you can actually do this by hand as well if you don't have Adobe Bridge. So if you need to do it by hand, go for it. But it's just much easier using Bridge to do so. Now that we have all these files layered into Photoshop, there are a few things we need to do before blending them together. The first thing we need to do is figure out which photo is which. From looking at these, it looks like this one's focused in the foreground. That's our top one, so let's label that foreground. And then we'll go ahead and click the eye and hide it. The next one looks to be focused in the center ground, so we'll enable that center. Then we'll go ahead and hide it. And this one looks to be focused in the background. So we'll label this back. And now we know which is which. So there are a few ways to go about blending these. You could do it by hand or you could let Photoshop do it for you. I'll show you how to do both ways and get started from there. First thing you'll notice though is if we hide these, you can see the photo moves a little bit. That's because when you change the focal point, it actually will actually change the focal length as well. So even though it's very small, it will keep your photos from being lined up. So the first thing we need to do is line our photos up. Let's click on foreground click select, select all of our photos. Next let's go to edit and auto align layers. We'll click projection auto and select OK. Once that's done rendering you can go through and make sure that they're all lined up. Let's just click it here and you can see the reflection changes but everything else is lined up. So now we have a foreground, center, and background all lined up. Now that we have all these layers lined up, let's go ahead and allow Photoshop to use its functionality and blend them together. So let's select the foreground, hold down shift, and select the background. This will select all the photos as you can see. Now go up to edit, auto blend layers, and select stack images and seamless tones and colors. So what Photoshop is going to do here is it's going to look at the photo and it's going to pick out the sharpest pixels in each layer and it's going to allow those pixels to show through. It's going to hide the pixels that are not sharp and allow those to be hidden. In turn, we can blend all three sections of this photo together to get one nice sharp photo. Now that this is done, we can look at these layers. If you're not f familiar with Photoshop layers, all you need to know is that white reveals and black conceals. So if we have a layer mask over the foreground, we can check that it's correct by seeing that the bottom part of the foreground, which is sharp in our photo, is white, which means it's revealed. So we can look at this layer mask and say, hey, looks like this part is being revealed, which is exactly what we wanted. Now we can go to the center photo, and we can see that the center part of the photo on the mask is white, which means that Photoshop blended through this nice sharp center portion of the photo, which is also what we wanted. The last thing is to look at the background. Now the background was just the top part of the photo, which is sharp. And as you can see, Photoshop left a white area up there, which means it blended through the mountain, which is sharp and part of the clouds which were also sharp and that's exactly what we wanted. Now let's revert back to before Photoshop's blend process and I'll show you how to do this by hand. Here's how I would do this by hand. First I'd cover up this with a layer mask. Just create a mask. And I can show you how to do that here. Select the foreground. Go up here to layer. Layer mask and hide all. We're going to make a hide all on both the foreground and center layers. Layer, layer mask, hide all. So now it's only showing the background layer which is focused just for this part of the peaks. The next thing we're going to do is blend through this mask and show the part that's sharp in the foreground. So I'll just grab my brush, make it a little bigger. I'm going to go down here and select a white brush. There we go. Now I'm going to go with 100% opacity. You can see that up here. I'm just going to blend through this. And you can see over here in the mask it's blending through it. Now this is not going to do quite as good of a job as Photoshop because it's not actually going to compare pixels and blend through them. I'm just going to blend through it for what I think is best fit. I think that'll work. And now we'll go to our center part of our photo and we'll blend through that, the part that we remember being focused. So the center part of our photo, just this was focused. So I'll blend that just a little bit in here. 
And let's see if we can go back here at all. That looks pretty focused back there, so it should work just fine. There we go. So that's all blended in now. And in the back, we don't need to do anything to, because that's just going to show anything that's not blended through here. So now we have a perfectly blended photo there as well. So either way, we can now compress these down to have one photo. Now that we have this perfectly sharp photo, we can do a few more things to edit it. Before I edit, I'm just going to go ahead and hit uh, Start of Processing. This is actually where I'd start all of the color contrast adjustments, uh, luminosity mask adjustments, and all that good stuff in my photo. So just that focus stacking part was the very preliminary part. After that, all the fun stuff starts. That's just to get a nice sharp focus photo. As you can see here, where we blended this photo through, um, there's some edges that didn't blend or line up correctly. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a duplicate of that photo. It's Command J. And I'm just going to hit Command T for free transform. And I think you can also do, see where transform is without a shortcut, uh, free transform. So just go to edit, free transform. I'm going to drag those edges off. And the reason I'm doing this instead of cropping is because I want to keep my same print pixel dimensions. Um, this is a 3 by 2 dimension, which is easy to print. And if I cropped it down, it wouldn't stay that same 3 by 2 dimension. So it works a little bit better to use free transform. So as far as focus stacking goes, that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and post-process this photo a little bit. So if you want to stick around and watch me do that, feel free to do so. I'm not really going to explain what I'm doing in post-processing. It's just going to be kind of me going and you watching. Uh, if you do want to pick up the Tony Kuiper luminosity mask actions that I'm using in here, uh, they are right here. I'm kind of going to use those a little bit in this end of this tutorial. Uh, I do have a link for them in the info notes on this video and on my website, so grab those. They're awesome. In terms of post-processing this photo, there's not really much I would, left I would do to it. The first thing I would do is make a new layer. Click right here. And clean up some of the spots, dust spots on it. So I just click S, that's for stamp. I'm just going to go up here and clone out that dust spot. And the other thing that was bothering me is that I saw some lines down here from blending. Looks like there's just a little bit of a line right there from blending. I wanted to make sure that was sharp. There we go. Got that out of there. And then I'll merge that down. Other than that, we're going to go through and edit using some of these TK actions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I get a basic midtones action and click it. So this is going to allow me to just adjust the contrast of my midtones. As you can see, when I bring that up, it's going to brighten it. So I'm just going to contrast these a little bit, bring up the darks, and then bring out some of those blacks. So that contrasted the midtones, and now I'm going to contrast the lights as well. And this is just a very basic post-processing session. Normally it would take anywhere from one to three hours to post-process a photo, but it's kind of just an overview of a few of the actions here. That's just going to add the lights. Now we can merge those down. Command E, and that'll do it. The last thing I want to do is just some light dodging and burning here and there. And just to bring out some of the light in the photo, I'm going to use my dodge tool on the highlights, and I'm going to use it at five, four or five percent, very light. I'm just going to bring a very large brush in here. My light source was coming from this way, so I kind of just want to bring a nice, easy dodge in there to brighten up some of that light coming in there. And we can check what it did here by hiding this layer on, off. So that looks good. And then I might use the same dodge tool to bring some of that light in here a little bit at the same percentage. I think that light looks good. The last thing I don't really like about this photo is that it's a little bit too red down here. So I am going to desaturate some of that red. So I'll click on my saturation, drag it down a little bit, and then I'm going to hide that mask. And then I'll just apply it to the bottom of my photo here. Oop, I'm still on dodge tool. Need to go and brush. Then we'll just apply it to the bottom of the photo. And we'll go up to 100% right in there. And we'll use opacity to dial it down just a little bit and see how it looks. Yeah, that looks more natural. And the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use my TK Actions again. And I'm going to use a Vibrance Mask. 
So what that's going to do is select the vibrant parts of my photo and just increase the vibrance in them. So I'm going to drag that up and you can see it adds a lot of vibrance to the top part of my photo. Now I'm going to apply a group over that, hide it. Now I'll just mask through the parts I want. So I want this to be more vibrant. Like that. And then we'll do some down in here. Maybe a little bit on the rock to bring some of that color back. There we go. I think that's pretty much good. That'll work. And from there we can just select the top layer, hold shift, select the bottom layer, and merge them all down. Now the last thing I want to do is get this ready for the web. So TK Actions also provide these nice web sharpening functions. These are all heights. So if I wanted to post this picture at 800 pixels high, I just post, I just click that button right there. And it sharpens it for me for 800 pixels. So that's exactly what the photo would look like. And you can go up here to save, save for web. And I'm going to save this as focus stacking tutorial. And I'm all done. So I'll click save there, place, and it's all saved to my desktop for me. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something. You can leave any comments you might have in the box below and I'll try to answer them. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.